Okay. <laughs> so let me start again. Uh, welcome to this uh, first session of the morning of the day. Uh, it's going to be about real world systems. We're going to have three different talks, one being online, the second one. And the first talk is about COCO, Concurrent Continuous Group Key Agreement by Joel Alwyn, Benedict Auerbach, Miguel Cueto Noval, Karen Klein, Guillermo Pascal Perez, uh, Krzysztof Pieczak, and Michael Walter. And Guillermo is giving the talk. Good? That works now? Kind of? So now it seems to. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, so is this working now? Yes, good. So as I was saying, I will talk to you about COCO, a concurrent continuous group key agreement, which is joint work with Joel, Benedict, Miguel, Karen, uh, Shistov, and Michael. And so the motivation for our work is, uh, <clears throat> is uh, secure group messaging, where a set of parties want to communicate. And they want to do so in the presence of an adversary that has control over the network, and moreover, can corrupt parties. So in particular, we will talk later about this, but the, the parties will want to rotate their keys, so what do they do in this case? So the naive solution, of course, is just to use bidirectional channels. Um, for example, each, between each pair of users, they can instantiate a signal protocol, a double ratchet protocol. But the problem here is that whenever they want to rotate the keys, this would need to be communicated independently to each individual user, which has linear communication cost, linear in the size of the group, of course. And this means it's not scalable. So instead, what we want to do is to, we want users to agree on a shared common key which they will then use to encrypt the messages, right? So this brings us to the primitive of continuous group key agreement, or CGKA, that was coined by Alvin et al. in Crypto20. And very roughly, this allows a group of end users to agree on a common key with the following properties. So we want it to support dynamic membership. So in particular, we want to be able to add and remove users from the group. We want it to be asynchronous, meaning we don't make any assumptions on the online behavior of users. So we have some untrusted server that buffers the messages and relays them afterwards. And we want it to be secure against compromise. And in particular, so as I said, we assume the, the adversary can uh, corrupt users. And wait, I don't know if I can remove that bottom part from. Can it be removed so the, the bottom of the slide can be seen properly? Well, so we want some security property to hold called PCFS, which is the uh, combination of forward secrecy, or FS, and post-compromise security, or PCS. And for those of you do, which are not familiar with these two notions, let me just recall them very quickly. So if we imagine the group timeline with uh, time running from left to right, and we imagine some compromise in the middle, which in our model means that the adversary can read everything in the corrupted device. So from all the keys that are currently stored there to all the random coins uh, sampled during that period, what forward secrecy ensures is that all the keys up to some point in the past remain secure. And PCS or post-compromise security in turn ensures that after some point after the compromise ends, the keys, remain uh, keys, keys are again secure. And of course, as you can imagine, and I discussed before, we will need to rotate the keys that parties have. So what we're aiming to do is to do this efficiently, in particular with logarithmic communication per rotation. 
So this brings us to our contribution, which is uh, a new protocol, COCO, uh, a new CGK, that allows for concurrent key rotations that do not have, um, that do not degrade the efficiency of the protocol. Uh, and in particular, our protocol uh, overcomes impossibility re previous impossibility results on the communication of uh, such concurrent protocols by relaxing the, the requirement on post-compromise security. What this relaxation means, I will, I will go into it later. And we also introduced the notion of partial states, which allows us to decrease the recipient communication of such protocols. So during this talk, I will give you an introduction on Trichem, which is the main example of such a CDK. We will discuss a bit uh, how concurrency in Trichem looks like. And then I will tell you about our protocol. We will talk about how concurrency is handled, efficiency, uh, these partial states, and a few words on security, just before uh, introducing a couple of open problems. So let's talk about Trichem. Trichem is the CK uh, underlying MLS, which stands for Message Layer Security. And it's a working group by the IETF trying to standardize uh, group messaging. And its aim is to scale to up to 50,000 users. So in particular, these efficient key rotations that I discussed before are really important, right? Because we're talking about the very big groups. And just to give you a historical note, this was proposed together with MLS in 2018 and replaced ART, which stands for Asynchronous Ratchet in Trees. Um, so what does MLS look like? It assumes a binary tree uh, where each node has an associated uh, keeper and the users are associated to the leaves. And the arrows here denote either encryptions or hash evaluations. So in particular, what this means is that if a user knows the key uh, at the node that is at the source of, a, of an edge, they will also know this, the secret key corresponding to the node at the sink of said edge. So in particular, it follows that a user will know the keys for the nodes in their path, right? So in particular, this, this uh, user A will know the keys highlighted in green. And the key associated to the root, which is shared by all the users, is the group key. And this will be used later um, to encrypt messages or derive a symmetric key to encrypt messages or whatever this CKA is used for. Um, before I told you that we can rotate our key material using only logarithmic uh, communication. So how could we do this? Uh, so let's say here A uh, wants to uh, rotate her keys. So what does she do? Um, so what she, what she does is she will sample a new seed for her leaf, a zero. And by evaluating a hash function, she will just sample new seeds for all the nodes in their path. Uh, from this, you can derive uh, keepers, so a secret key, public key. And then she will create encryptions of these seeds and no the node in the co-path. Uh, so in particular, uh, if we look at this node here, for example, uh, we see that a single encryption from the root node allows all the, all the four users in this, in this subtree, sorry, in this subtree, to learn the new key, right? So in particular, this means that we only need an algorithmic number of ciphertext to communicate the new keys to everyone. So the, the continuous edges here are encryption edges, in case you cannot read it, and the other ones are hash edges. And then the new keys substitute the old ones. Uh, so what, uh, what this means is that now all the previous keys that were in, all the keys that used to be in Alice in A's estate uh, are useless now and not part of the tree. Uh, and let me just very quickly go through how, our, how we can handle removes because this will be relevant for later. So if A here wants to remove E, what she does is uh, samples all the no, uh, sorry, blanks all the nodes on E's path. And blanking here means that these nodes will then have no associated key. So these keys are useless. And effectively E is removed from the group. Uh, and the effect that having a blank node in the tree has is that if we imagine that A now wants to update, um, so what this, what this says <laughs> below, it says that if you want to encrypt to a blank, so in this case, A, the root, she would want to encrypt to this node, but this node is blank here, right? So instead, she will need to encrypt to something called the resolution, which are these two yellow nodes. And uh, informally, it's just the, the smallest set of nodes to which she needs to encrypt so that all the users in that subtree learn the new key. So effectively, having blank nodes degrades the efficiency of the protocol because more encryptions are needed. Um, uh, in um, with respect to concurrency in Trichem, we can differentiate between two versions. So we have plain Trichem, which corresponds to versions before seven. And this is not concurrent and updates need to be processed all in order. So in particular, if we imagine two users A and B that want to update at the same time, one of them will get their update accepted by the server, the other one will be rejected. And the one that gets it rejected, say B, 
we'll need to then process the update by A and then issue a new update that hopefully will now get accepted. So in particular, this means that if we want T users to update, to rotate their keys, we will need T communication rounds. In contrast, we have propose and commit, um, which corresponds to versions eight and, and up. Uh, we are currently in version 14, and this does allow for concurrent updates. And what it does is, let me see if, if I do this, perhaps you can see the bottom a bit better, sorry. Uh, yeah, but here I don't have it actually. No. Uh, I actually see a different screen from here than there, but um, yeah, well, perhaps we can do it like this so you see slightly more of the screen. Um, so we have proposed commit, which is another uh, flavor of Trichem where actually we can have concurrent updates. And what we have here is a decoupling of operations between proposals and commits. So users can send proposals, which just get buffered and not applied immediately. And then a commit will collect several of these proposals and execute them simultaneously. So what this means for, for post-compromise security is that we can, we can achieve it in two rounds, regardless of how many corruptions we have in the tree. So before recall, in the previous flavor of Trichem, if we had T corrupted users and we want all of them to update, we will need T rounds. So here we need two, and the way this would look like is all corrupted users could then issue an update proposal, and then a second user could just commit. All of these proposals would get executed concurrently, and that's it. And this incurs a, a communication which is linear in the number of updating users. So this is actually shown to be optimal if we want to heal in two rounds by binge talk at all in TCC20. Uh, this sounds good. Uh, the problem, of course, is that having these update proposals ruins the tree structure. So having this fast healing into rounds degrades the performance. And just to give you an example of what this looks like, let's say that C, E, and F want to propose updates here, and then A comes along and, and, and commits them. So what, a, so what a proposal does is it just simply um, send, so if C wants to propose an update, they just simply send a new key for their, for their leaf. Here are marked in blue. And when these proposals get committed, what happens is that the old key gets substituted by the new one, and then all the other nodes in their path get blanked. So now uh, these new keys sampled by A need to be encrypted individually to all the leaves because all the uh, inside nodes of the tree are blanked. So of course this tree is fairly small, but in general you can see that the communication can be, can be degraded uh, all the way down to linear. So in particular, we're back at this trivial case of um, of bidirectional channels that, that we mentioned at the beginning, which is what we wanted to avoid. So if we want to uh, see, look at this pictorially, perhaps, uh, to have a clear idea, uh, plain tricking, we could imagine it as some long queue of users waiting to update, um, whereas proposed commit will allow a lot of users to, to do it all at once at the cost of perhaps degrading the, or making it harder for future users to update. Um, the realization that we have in our paper is that we can actually do better if we don't require PCS to hold into rounds, but instead we relax it to perhaps heal in a few more rounds. Um, so let's talk about how concurrency is handled in Coco. So let's say here that two parties, A and C, want to update concurrently. Uh, so they would propose updates just as in Trichem. So A would sample the new seeds together with encryptions. C in blue would do the same. And now the question is how do we apply them? So if this affect, uh, so if, if a node is affected by only one update, such as would be the case for, for this node, for example, we just apply them as in Trichem. However, if an update, up, uh, if a node is affected by two updates, like the node in the intersection of, uh, of the two paths, then we would use some ordering to choose which update takes precedence. Uh, so this ordering can be chosen arbitrarily, can be chosen by the server, or could just be some fixed pre-agreed pre ordering, like rightmost user wins. And we just have a new tree where we see that the update from A didn't make it all the way to the root, but that's okay. Uh, what does this mean for, for PCS? So let's take the same example where now A and C are corrupted. So here the, the red keys signal are, um, red uh, signals the keys that the adversary has knowledge of. Uh, and let's say they both update with the same ordering as before. So what we can observe here is that as before, if a node has only been affected by one update, it will heal. 
but the node and the intersection will get encrypted to an old key from the key, sorry, the seed at the intersection will get encrypted to an old key from A, which is under the knowledge of the adversary. So in particular, the adversary can decrypt, learn the new seed, derive the new key, and learn the two new keys for those two red paths, right? So even though both users updated, there are still some insecure keys, but nevertheless, we made the updating parties made some progress. Uh, and in particular, if any of them do a, a future update, they will heal. So this sort of highlights the difference between our protocol, which heals the tree layer by layer, uh, as opposed to, to trickem, the plain trickem, which just heal the tree path by path, or propose and commit, which would just heal the tree all at once by just flattening it. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, so, of course, we don't consider such simple examples where the corruptions end at the same time. Uh, but in general, the, the statement we get very informally is if we consider a group key K in some round, then we say that this key is secure if the following is true for every user. So for each user, we look at the last time uh, they were corrupted, and then we require the following. Either the user performed a logarithmic number of updates from the last time this, was, this corruption happened, finished, or they performed at least one, but such that no other user updated concurrently to them. Uh, so if we, again, go back to our pictures, we could imagine a SCOCO as something where the users do need to go through more updating processes, but they can do it all at the same time and without damaging any structure. Um, when it comes to efficiency, um, I, I have a table here which, uh, which highlights some of the the points. So uh, on the top, we would just have plain trickem, which as I said, is just non-concurrent. So we would just take uh, n rounds to heal. So sorry, here I should say, I am uh, plotting the cost of uh, healing uh, an arbitrary number of corruptions per user. And here we are assuming that there is no knowledge of who is corrupted and no coordination. So in particular, all users will try to update since they don't know whether they are corrupted. And also they cannot agree on, on, on an ordering. Uh, also, for simplicity, of course, there are no further corruptions or adds or removes in between this process. Uh, so, as I said, the, the top protocol, uh, non-concurrent, will just take n rounds. Then we have three protocols, so propose, commit, uh, the binge talk at all protocol, there's a typo, should be TCC20, and bidirectional channels that all can heal in two rounds at the cost of linear communication per user. And moreover, they have the cost that they destroy the tree structure to some extent, so subsequent updates per user would cost either linear or in the case of binge talk, uh, linear in the worst case, but logarithmic on average. The trade-off that Coco brings is fairly obvious. So we can t we take a few more rounds to heal, so logarithm n plus one. Uh, but on the upside, uh, the communication, both for senders and recipients is now logarithm square. And moreover, the subsequent update cost is still logarithmic. Uh, and one uh, particular thing to point out is that we have logarithmic number of rounds. We have a linear number of users updating in each round. So we would expect the recipient communication to be at least n log n, right? Uh, however, it's uh, log n squared, and this is due to uh, partial states, which is the, the thing that I will talk about now. Uh, the observation here is that if we, keep, if we want users to keep track of the changes that happen in the whole tree, then this incurs a download size, in, which is linear in the number of updaters. Uh, however, uh, A, in this case, only needs uh, the keys for the green nodes, which are the, the ones for which she knows the, the secret key of, so she needs these for the encryption, and she needs the public keys for the, for the purple nodes, because she needs to encrypt to these nodes whenever she sends a message. However, she doesn't care about the black keys, about the keys for the black nodes. So what we have is we have the server uh, only relay packets for A uh, whenever these packets correspond to adds or removes, or correspond to update information for the green or purple nodes. And all the packets that correspond to black nodes, the server just does not relay. So it does not need to download those. Uh, this seems simple enough, but it actually poses a lot of challenges, uh, which I'm not going to go into detail here, but just to give you a flavor of the sort of uh, things that we need to solve. So one is consistency. Uh, in trick and consistency is ensured to, through mechanisms called transcript hash and tree hash. These are both a hash of the group history and some com Merkle commitment to the tree. Uh, but of course, as I just said, in Coco, the users nor know the full tree, nor know all the updates that take place. 
So we cannot no longer have a unified definition of um, or users cannot agree on which uh, operations have taken place or how the tree looks like. So instead we rely on the server to somehow complete the view of the tree through some commitments to subtrees. Uh, the second issue we run into is what it means, uh, defining what it means for a user to process an update. And I'll motivate this with an example. So let's say that B updates here in green, samples a new key, and A before updated log n times, or rather ceiling of log n plus one. So from our predicate, we would want, we would want um, security, uh, but the server is assumed to, to be malicious. So what happens if the server ignores A updates and never sends those to B? Is the key secure? Well, of course not, because the new key sent by B is just encrypted to the old key of A, right? So we need some notion of B processing A's updates. And this turns out to be fairly non-trivial in, non, uh, in the partial states regime. And as a last challenge, uh, consider the case of removals. So as I mentioned before, when, when, when a user is removed, blanks are created. And what this means is that if you recall, if A now wants to encrypt to this node here, she will not, she cannot because there's no key. So she will need to encrypt to these two nodes. So A, after E is removed, A will need to learn the public keys for those two nodes. And the question is, how does she do that? Because of course, by asynchronicity, we, make, we have no guarantee that any party knowing them is online. So the server will need to send those public keys to, to A, but then A needs to actually guarantee that these keys are correct. And again, this also poses some challenges. Uh, so if you want to see how we solve all this and how we prove it secure, then I invite you to read the paper. Um, but in terms of key security, we prove Coco secure in the random oracle model against an adaptive, partially active adversary. And partially active here means that they can control the server but cannot impersonate users. Our proof has a polynomial loss. And we've uh, adapted the proof of uh, Klein et al. from SMP21 for tainted trichem. And just so to give you a summary, so uh, we, in this paper we present Coco a CGK protocol that can recover from arbitrary number of corruptions in a logarithmic number of rounds uh, without degrading the efficiency uh, of subsequent updates. And in doing so, we circumvent a lower bound by relaxing PCS. And uh, we show that partial states are possible, and in particular, that they bring a great decrease in recipient communication. And as uh, open problems, we would like to better understand the trade-off between communication cost and the number of rounds that it takes to heal as well as whether we can prove active security for Coco, where we allow the adversary to actually impersonate users. And just to give you a taste of some uh, related work uh, that just came out uh, called DCAF uh, for the centralizable CGK with fast healing, we actually uh, do a different, uh, consider a different way in which you can merge concurrent updates. And this allows us to heal in, in log T rounds at the cost of no, not being able to use partial states. Um, with that, I will finish and I'll take any questions. Thank you. If there are any questions for Guillermo, please come to one of these two mics over there. Can you scroll down? Ah, sorry. Uh, sorry, T is just the number of corruptions. Okay. Sorry. Any questions for Guillermo? Uh, all right, so um, uh, do you use the uh, random oracle um, to make some adaptive proof, some programming possible, or, or is this just to simplify the proof? Uh, no, uh, so our proof needs a random oracle for proving adaptivity, yes. Thank you for your, for your talk. Uh, I was wondering um, what kind of key agreement is used in publicly available uh, messaging uh, apps, such as uh, Signal, for example, and do you have discussions with them so that they, they can adopt your solution in, uh, in their app? Um, so I think uh, most, I think each app is different, but uh, 
So Signal will actually use bidirectional channels, I believe, whereas WhatsApp, I think, will use something called sender keys, um, where the key for, so for groups, the key is only rotated, uh, I believe, when, when users are added and removed from the group. So you actually don't get as a strong PCS. Um, and no, we have not talked to them, but uh, the work we've, we're doing is sort of complementary to the MLS, which I guess is, is a standard by ITF, which hopefully would be the one that would get adopted. Right. I'm not sure what their particular views, for example, Signal does care about deniability, which I'm not sure uh, is totally compatible with uh, with some of these, but, you know. One last question, maybe, a very quick one. No, everybody's happy. Okay, let's thank uh, Guillermo again. And the next presentation will be online. Um, it's about efficient schemes for committing authenticated encryption by Mihir Belare and Viet Tong Wang. And Viet Tong should be online to give the talk. Let me share my screen.